2017 is going to be a big year for us. We can be a world champion and we can beat the guys at the top. We're going to get an opponent for April, May. We want to run through that opponent. Then at the end of the year, we're going to get an A-grade fighter. Badu Jack's moving up to light heavyweight. The Andre Wards, the Donna Stevensons, the Fonfaras. That's who you want to chase. If you want to, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. They're the big names and I believe I can beat them all. If Kovalev's still there, I'd love you know, to get my, my revenge. I don't fear anyone. My name is Blake Caparello, known in the ring as Il Capo. My style Southpaw. Uh, I like to be defensive, but now we're bringing on the attack and that, so a little bit slick. Brought in the American style, which is a bit different down here in Australia. How much it's appreciated, we're not sure. But I'm playing on the world level, so it is what it is, and looking forward to bringing, bringing home a world title. I was a carpenter before I turned professional. It was actually, I still remember, my second fight, I was still in the carpentry business. Had my second fight, it was the end of um, November 2009, and I just decided it was hard doing a full-time physical trade, then going to the gym and giving everything. So I thought, this sport, you only get one shot. So I took the risk, and I went all for boxing, and here we are. Brendan Burke co-manages us, so he gave my name to Lou Debella. And I think Debella liked Caparello, it's an Italian surname, he's Italian himself. I still remember he asked, so what's his ring name? And at the time we didn't have a ring name, so we gave him Il Capo, which means the boss in Italian. And we just thought, you know, rhymes with my surname as well. And mate, he was over the moon, he couldn't wait to meet me. And yeah, that's how it all began. I was at light heavyweight, did do a stint at super middleweight. I think my style's more suited to the light heavyweights. And then having um, Dash and Johnson down just recently, we asked him personally, because he's been in sparring camps with everyone, GGG, Chavez Jr., Canelo, Timothy Bradley, and we sort of, he's got a lot of experience, and we asked him the question, where do you think Blake should stay? Should he stay at super middle, or should he stay at light heavy? And he basically said, he goes, stay at light heavy, because no big guy moves like you do. The size you have, and how you use your reach, and your style, he goes, the light heavies don't move like that. Now, I've been on the co-feature to Zach Dunn. It wasn't, it wasn't a fight to uh, build up to a main event fight between Zach and I. I don't think they're looking at fighting us, so that is what it is. We just thought it was a good opportunity for us. It was a big show, so we took the fight, and being at super middleweight, we done what we had to do. We got rid of the opponent early, and yeah, no, we're not going to get a fight with Zach. The training camp with Alida Alvarez leading up to his fight with Lucci and Butte, it was a good three weeks there. I've actually helped Pascal out in the past when he was fighting Butte, so the team knows me well. I wasn't surprised by the result because I questioned um, Butte's chin a bit, but I also thought it was a 50-50 fight. You know, Butte brought work rate and experience as well, and this was Alida's probably biggest test. So. He was sparring well, um, he's got nice snap from the outside and he just had to keep him on the outside. It was a close fight up until that, that point, but he clipped him for a nice shot and he finished him. Alvarez is mandatory for Adonis, Stevenson. I've done two camps with Adonis and one with Alida. I've got a good relationship with both teams. I'm leaning towards Adonis. I just think he's got a lot more tricks and people don't give Adonis the credit for his boxing ability. Um, he's actually quite hard to hit, and he's got that left hand. That left hand's just one punch knockout he's got in that left hand. With the Durrell fight, I did knock him down in the second round. On the outside boxing with him, I felt very good, very comfortable. The lead up week to the fight, there was a few things that you know, went wrong that only my team and, my, um, and the Bella know about and we're not going to make excuses. Uh, he, he brought the right game plan, he put the pressure on. Some stages I felt great, and then some stages early on I felt a bit flat in that. So for me personally, I actually learned a lot outside of the ring and also in the ring. Like I know I can beat Andre Durrell. Um, it was a great fight, 
but I wasn't 100%, and I know no boxer is 100% all the time, but I had a few issues going into it. But he brought the right game plan, because we all know Andre's a great boxer from the outside, but he wasn't outboxing me from the outside. He, you know, put the hands up and he knew he was getting more work rate in. So he beat me with that, and that, that's another fight. Eventually, I'm sure he'll be coming up to light heavyweight as well. So that's why it's a good division at the moment, light heavyweight. There's some big super middleweights that I think will be coming to light heavyweight. You know, as we've seen Badu Jack, that Ramirez is a big super middleweight as well. So Callum Smith. So there's some great fight. The future's, the future's huge in both those divisions. My knockdown with Sergey Kovalev, I know Max Kellerman said, you know, you stood on his foot. If you watch it, I think maybe a little bit of my big toe touched his big toe. We knew that when he finishes combinations, he stands back and he fixes his trunks. And we knew that was where we had to capitalize. So that's where we flew in for one, two. No, it wasn't a massive one, two, but it was, it is what it is. He stood back, squared off. You can't square off in boxing. You can't leave yourself unprotected at any stage. So it was a legitimate knockdown. I think Sergey himself in one of the press conferences in the Pascal fight maybe admitted, he said, yep, it was a legitimate knockdown. It, okay, it didn't hurt him, but they can't say it was a stand on the foot. And usually if it's standing on the foot, you see this foot being stood on and you fall down, but he fell down legitimately and yeah. Sergey's Kovalev's power is, it's, it's huge. People think it's a brute power, but he's actually, he's got long arms and it's, it's like a loose power, a loose snap. So I still remember in the first round, I felt a bit of the power, you know, in the shoulders and that. And I'm like, it's up there, big power. But I'm like, okay, I was getting com uh, comfortable with it. And in the second round, the whole game plan was just little movements, little movements. I was looking for the for him to throw that right hand up top, and I was on a, my plan was a slip and counter. But he faked up top and hit me square on the liver, and down I went. The Ward Kovalev fight, you have to beat the champion. I still believe that. Um, so you'd, you'd generally give it to Kovalev. Maybe if you took the names away, who they are, who's the champion, maybe you could give it to Ward because sometimes in the later rounds, I don't think Kovalev done enough. He got a bit reliant on that power and all credit to Ward, he changed the game plan. They were close around. So usually they'll go to the champion, but in that sort of fight, I think Kovalev took, he just looked, got one dimensional and Ward done what he had to do. He made it ugly. He you know worked in close, held, worked. So it looked like it was all Ward. It was, it was a close fight. That, that fight needs a rematch. With Andre Ward beating Kovalev, you know, he claimed three titles. In a way, it was good because I don't think Andre's going to defend, he's not going to do his mandatory fights. So I think a lot of titles are going to become vacant. And now it gives all the up and coming, the, the people that have been holding those two, three, four spots for a while, gives them the opportunity. And it's just going to open up the division a lot more again. So it'll create more opportunity for myself as well. And we all know Lou DeBella brings a big fight.